All right, so I have semi-retired Bob on today. I was on Bob's channel, uh, what was it, a few days ago now? And uh, I started watching Bob, I think probably when you first started, maybe about a year ago. And I've seen this crazy transformation. I was wondering if you could just start by talking about your story, um, the issues that you've had to de deal with, and then we could get into the benefits and, and how you've sort of transformed your life in there. Sure. First, let me say thanks for having me, Scott. It is a pleasure to be here today. Um, but yeah, to, to understand my story, you have to go back to 1983 when I was discharged from the Army because I have gout. Now, the handout that the Army doctor and the handout that I got from the doctor that I found right after I got out of the service were the exact same handout talking about the gout diet what do you eat to keep gout under control? And it was lots of fruits, lots of veggies, um, whole grains. If you're going to eat meat, have a two ounce portion two or three times a week, have it fish and chicken, occasionally pork, never beef. Because they knew for a fact that eating beef and organ meats is what caused gout. And I never had a reason to question that. I proceeded through my life for the next 30 plus years, slowly gaining weight, eating the diet they told me to eat. I knew I was getting heavier, but there wasn't much I could do about it because I had severe gout. I would have a flare up at least once a month, a severe one, or a couple of times a month, slightly less severe. So every time I'd start an exercise program, um, I would have a gout flare up and would have to stop. And that cycle just kept repeating itself and repeating itself. Um, and, you know, I wanted to get an exercise program started because at that time we knew as fact that all you had to do to control your weight was to eat less food and move more. That's all you had to do. And following their advice all the way through 30 years later, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Um, and again, I met with the dietitian at my doctor's office and the handout that she gave me was basically the same as the handout I got 30 years prior when I left the army. And I'm like, but this doesn't work. And she's like, well, just try a little harder. Okay. So I tried a little harder and I continued to gain weight. And that's when I started to really my arth at, at that point, my arthritis started to get bad. My spinal stenosis started to get bad. I'm not sure exactly when the fatty liver started, but my liver markers started to climb. My kidney markers started to climb. Um, everything was kind of falling apart. And uh, about five and a half years ago, all of that um, badness culminated in uh, a triple bypass surgery. And I did feel a little better after my triple bypass surgery because, you know, obviously the, my heart was getting oxygen again, so I felt better, but I still had all the problems that I had before and things just kept continuing to, to snowball to where about the last year, and I didn't realize it at the time, but now that I'm beyond all of that, my mind is clearer. I now looking back at that time realized that I was not only just surprised every morning when I woke up, I uh, was literally just sitting at home on my couch waiting to die um, so that it would all be over and the pain would go away. Um, and then one day I was sitting in my, because I live in a camper trailer down in North Carolina during the winter, because only an idiot spends winters in Omaha, Nebraska on purpose. Um, I, uh, I had YouTube popped up this video that I didn't, I don't know. I have no idea how it got onto my YouTube homepage because I've always been a, a van life, camping, travel, tourism, photography kind of YouTube user. And right in this top center of my homepage was a video by Dante Ferrigno, um, 
And the title of it was 125 Days on the Lion Diet or something like that. I thought, well, wow, those before and after pictures he's got there look pretty good. I'm going to have to click on this and see what the lion diet is. And it wasn't very long that I, and in watching it, I discovered that the lion diet is basically just a, an extreme form of the ketogenic diet. And I thought, well, I can't do that because I have gout. I'm, I can't eat meat. So <clears throat> I went on about my day. And because I had watched some of that video, YouTube then pushed out this really, really strange looking video that had a, a, a country doctor on it. And I went, well, well, what the heck? I'll listen to this guy. He's talking about carnivore. I didn't know what the heck carnivore was, but I clicked on his video and it was this country doctor from Tennessee by the name of Ken Berry. And I kind of liked him because he talks just like I do. He was from, he, you know, he's from the, the middle of Appalachia, which is where I grew up. So I related to him, but it's like, well, geez, there's nothing, you know, this is all great information. And he seems like a really smart guy, but I have gout. I can't do anything he's talking about here. But I did notice that he was going live that day. It was a Monday. He was going live. So I thought, well, I'll check out his live, see what he's got to say. Maybe I can get a question answered. And, you know, I didn't notice that he had 2 million subscribers at the time. And when I got into his live 15 minutes before it started, there were already a couple of thousand people there. I thought, well, I'm not going to be able to get a question answered. But because I was there, I dutifully typed in my question into the comment section and just said, I have gout, I can't eat a lot of meat. Is there a version of this diet I can do? If I had known at that time how successful everything was going to be, I would have written the person's name down. I want to say it was Mitzi, but it may have been Paola. I can't tell you for sure who it was, but one of his moderators sent back a personal message to me that said, Bob, red meat does not cause gout, Here's a link to Dr. Barry's gout videos. And I went and checked them out and proceeded to have absolutely everything I knew as fact for the previous 40 years turned on my head. And that's how I got into carnivore. Wow. Okay. So you just dive right into carnivore, right? From, from what I understand from watching your videos, you didn't really transition in. Yeah, no, now that I know better, I would have done it differently. Um, yeah. But I was on my way, I had decided to do it while I was still in North Carolina, but I didn't feel like it would be um, polite because I was stopping at my sister's house to visit with my sister and my mother in Ohio on my way back to Nebraska. So I thought, well, it would be impolite to call Janet up two days before I get there and say, sorry, all that food you bought for me, you're going to have to throw that away and go out and buy me a bunch of steaks because that all, that's all I'm going to eat now. So I thought, well, I'm planning on traveling home on May the 8th. So when I get home, I'll go grocery shopping because, of course, I've been gone for six months. So there was no food in the house anyway. So I had to go grocery shopping. I just bought all carnivore foods and I started on May the 9th. Now, I do not rec uh, recommend this for people unless you're like me and have two to three weeks that you can spend doing nothing but hanging out very close to the bathroom in your house. Because uh, let's just say you will have issues that are sudden and explosive. Um, that does go away after a couple of three weeks. Um, but it's it, that it will happen to you if you change your diet from any one thing to any other thing too rapidly your body reacts that way but uh in this case i went from you know basically a, a pizza and cheetos diet to um hamburgers and steaks overnight and my body did not like that at all for the first couple of weeks did you question, were you kind of like a little bit scared because we're always taught that red meat and, you know, that, that meat really contributes to gout and, and makes the symptoms worse, right? So did you have any sort of reservation, uh, you know, entering into this diet? 
And after that initial phase of, you know, two, three weeks of kind of feeling off, what happened then? Okay, well, I did have a few reservations going into it. Um, but I, I watched many um, Dr. Barry videos. And then I found this little angry bald man um, out there that was was talking about nutrition and health and telling everybody that they were wrong by the name of Professor K. And I watched a bunch of his videos. And in all of that process, I found Dr. Chafee, I found Dr. Paul Mason, I found Dr. Sean Baker, um, and realized that at that time I was taking, it's like, what, what do I have to lose? I'm, I'm, I've got one foot in the grave already. I'm taking 13 pills in the morning, nine at night, plus pain pills. You know, usually three Lyrica maximum strength a day, which is the maximum dosage. And I had a great big bottle of tramadol that I took when it wasn't time to take a Lyrica yet, but my pain was still there. So I thought, well, you know, the worst that can happen is this will kill me. And that may not be such a bad thing at this point because nothing else has worked and I feel terrible. I couldn't even stand for two to two and a half minutes without severe pain. So I jumped into the diet head first, had the bathroom issues. And it was at that point, it was about two, two and a half weeks in when I decided to make the video for, I wasn't planning on anybody else really seeing it. I made it for myself. Plus at the time I had about 25 friends and family that were subscribed to my channel. It was just a way of communicating with everybody without having to make 25 phone calls. I thought, well, I'm going to tell them I'm doing this because the, the explosions have stopped and I don't feel as terrible as I did. So I put out that uh, semi-retired Bob Goes Carnivore video. And I realized that, you know, I wanted to make that video and I had a little note sheet to make sure I covered everything. But when I sat down in front of my camera, I then realized that my note sheet was out of reach on my left hand side and my left shoulder is the one that's always been the very worst joint in my body. And I saw it over there and I just reached over and I grabbed it. And I started reading through my note sheet and it's like, did I just do that? Because before I would have had to turn and hold on to my left arm and slowly reach over to grab that sheet. And that's when I noticed that, you know, my pants don't feel quite as tight as they were before. So at that point, I stepped on the scale and I was 315 pounds. So I used that as the baseline of where I started because that's the first time I scaled. But given how much weight I lost, how rapidly I lost it, I would have to guess I was somewhere between 325 and 335 when I actually started. Um, prior to starting, and then I, I started, you know, going like, hey, my hands don't hurt quite as much. Um, and things just sort of took off from there. Over the next four months, I lost... Um, I don't remember exactly what it was. It was somewhere between 75 and 80 pounds in the first four months. Um, when I first started, this was about the best fists I could make with my hands. And now they work perfectly. Um, and that's, uh, that's where it all started. And then I decided it was time to get up and start moving after that. And I started walking in September. So it was about four months into the journey that I started walking, but that's, uh, that the initial phases of it were remarkable. Wow. So I hate to get too philosophical, but you know, I, I like your sort of your view of, well, what the hell do I have to lose at that point? You're suffering. Why not give it a try, right? You have these doctors on the sort of what, you know, mainstream medicine would consider to be radical can bury you know, Paul Mason, Professor K. I have a friend, I, I, I have a friend who has gout and I've tried to convince him to 
try the carnivore diet. He won't do it. You know, he he's sort of mired in that dogma of conventional medicine and what his doctor says is doctor knows best. Right. Um, there are people I've talked to with cancer and I say, well, why not just try a ketogenic diet? Why not try metabolic therapy? Even if you want to do your conventional Western medicine, chemo, radiation, that type of stuff, why not try it? What the hell do you have to lose? Ketogenic, ketogenic diet's not going to hurt you. So I love that philosophy that you, that you have now, I think a lot of people are wondering, and sorry, that's sort of aside from everything I'm about sure. to get into, but I think a lot of people are wondering, well, what the heck does Bob eat exactly? I know you made some videos about it, but can you break down what your diet is look like? Does it include a lot of red meat? Does it include organs? What does it look like? Okay. Before I answer that question, show this video to your friend with gout. I'm speaking directly to him right now. I had at least one gout attack, severe gout attack, to where I couldn't even put a sheet on my body when I was laying down for 40 years. Wow. Since starting this diet, I have not had a single gout flare up. Not one. Not one. Not and you've been on the diet one. for how long exactly now? A year? Uh, a year and a week. A not year and quite, a week. Yeah, a year and a week, because today is Tuesday. And last Tuesday, the day before my 60th birthday, was my one-year anniversary on Carnivore. So exactly a year and a week today. Happy Carnivore to you, Bob. Thank <laughs> that's you. That's awesome. Thank you Good very for much. you. Like, have you always been a guy that's that sort of looked outside the box a little bit, or um, did that sort of develop over time? We were just like, well, you know, why the hell not? And 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 maybe in the last year since you tried this, you're like, okay. Maybe everything I was taught about nutrition is wrong then. Yeah, no, I have not always been this way because um, I was just, you know, living my life and believing everything my doctors told me, which is how I got into the mess I was in in the first place. But since seeing the results of this, that is contrary to everything any of my doctors had ever told me, I... Uh, I now question everything. Yeah, me and too. I don't, me too. And I, I don't know how much of it I would have picked up prior, because um, about it's been about eight nine years ago, my doctor put me on statins, <clears throat> and I did not realize it at the time, but my brain function was slowly declining on statins. I am not nearly as quick-witted and quick-thinking as I used to be. It is slowly coming back, but I'm not nearly as sharp as I once was. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that is this diet and getting off statins. Um, but no, I have not always been like this. That's a, that's a new development over the last year since I started this diet. I can really relate to your story where I sort of had this belief in, in the system, you know, everything was right. Go to my doctor if I'm sick. And it really took being chronically ill for so long to finally hit me over the head and be like, okay, this isn't the way to go. You know, your doctors are wrong. They're wrong about diet. They're wrong about drugs They're wrong about this and that lifestyle type stuff. Um, so now I'm at that point where I'm questioning everything, but yeah, I think that a lot of people will want, will be very interested to hear what it is that you eat exactly. Yeah. Well, because I'm a retired guy, not because I'm old, but because after my heart surgery, I was so fat. I had so much fat inside my chest cavity that the surgeon had a really hard time getting my chest closed again. Um, the, the hospital that I went to is one of the finest hospitals in the country for bypass surgeries. And everybody that works on the cardiac ICU ward actually has to watch the surgeries of the patients they're going to be taking care of. So my nurse, I believe his name was Sam, if I remember right, he was in there and he was telling me that, you know, literally the doctor had the wires wrapped around the two halves of my chest 
and were pulling it so hard that my body was lifting a full six to eight inches off of the operating table, trying to get my chest cavity closed again. He did get it closed, but I'm retired because my, my sternum deformed and I couldn't get a DOT card anymore to continue driving my truck. So what I eat in a day, the, all of that is to say I'm an old retired guy on a fixed income. And I wasn't planning on being an old retired guy on a fixed income for another 10 to 15 years. So money is very tight. So primarily I eat ground beef. I have ground beef for probably 80 to 85% of my meals. Here in Nebraska, I get stew meat very cheaply. And if you cook it low and slow and then turn the heat up on the cast iron, it sort of tastes like sirloin tips. Not exactly, but I can fool myself into thinking I'm eating something pretty good. And the occasional uh, chuck roast. And that's what I eat. It's, you know, almost 100% beef now. Back when I first started, I was eating, you know, some pepperoni and some lunch meat from the deli counter and some all beef hot dogs and things like that because they were cheaper. I have since moved away from those because I just, I just had, but I still, when I'm home in Nebraska, I buy I have a grocery store out here called Fairway and they make their own ground beef in house. Like just last week I stocked up, I now have 20 pounds of ground beef in the freezer because they have a sale a couple, three times a year. I got it for $1.99 a pound and it's made in house 80, 20 beef. I know that they made it out of basically just their scraps from everything they've trimmed off of steaks. And, uh, yeah, that's a very good place to buy meat. But when I'm down in North Carolina, my choices are Food Lion and Walmart. So I just go to Walmart and get the big 10 pound tubes of uh, 7327 ground beef. But yeah, I primarily eat ground beef with the occasional either stew meat or um, chuck roast thrown in there <clears throat> as a break from the monotony of ground beef. But I like ground beef really well. Some days I make patties out of it and have hamburger patties. Some days I just throw all my ground meat in the skillet and brown it up and just have like a, a taco bowl without all the seasonings or cheese. So I guess you just call it a ground beef bowl because it's just a bowl of loose ground beef with salt on it. And that's, that's what I eat. Um, okay. I don't do fish anymore. I occasionally you know if they, if i find some on sale i'll buy some fish but i live in nebraska i am as far from deep water as you can get anywhere in the world right here in omaha nebraska and even the frozen cod fillets and things like that are really expensive here because they have to be shipped in from somewhere they don't there are no fish factories in nebraska there's a lot of beef factories. We are the feedlot capital of the world, but uh, getting fish here is very hard. And I will occasionally eat some sausages because I have a place down the road called Stoysage House of Sausage where they make their own hot dogs and their own brats and things like that right in house so I can get clean ones because they can tell you exactly what's in each thing before you buy it. But I would have to say at this point, my food is 99 to 99.5% beef. Beef is what I eat because it's what's cheap and available here in Nebraska. Have you dabbled with organs at all or is that kind of a big no-no with, with goat? Um, I don't know if it's true or not, but organ meat has always been the very first thing listed on the do not eat this foods gout diet listing. Um, so I've never tried them. I'm assuming since everything else that handout they gave me was absolutely false, that organ meats would probably be okay. But number one, I never liked them before. So I have no problem 
following that part of the gout diet advice and just not having organ meats. So I couldn't tell you whether I, whether they would trigger me or not. I don't know. And since watching Professor K's videos, because I had originally found that doctor who promoted uh, ground organ, des ground desiccated organ capsules. Mm -hmm. And because they were too expensive for a guy on a fixed income to buy, I never did. Although I did seriously consider what I could cut out of my budget to add those in because I was assuming it was very important, but then after listening to Professor K for a while longer, I decided, you know, I just don't think I need these. So, no, I have not eaten organ meat at all. Hmm. Maybe it could be worth uh, getting some sweet breads one day. I think that's the highest purine food uh, of organs and maybe uh, giving it a test. <laughs> um, you know, I might do that test at some point, but... I probably will not because I remember what having a gout attack felt like and what I'm doing is working. Mm -hmm. So why, why, why test? Exactly. Yeah. So what, what about, so what are the worst offenders for uric acid? From my understanding, it's sugar. We're talking, I heard fruit is a really bad one. Is that true? Or can you maybe sort of guide us on that a bit? Um, I don't know. I was always told it was red meat and eating too much meats. And, you know, when I was uh, first diagnosed with, with gout, your uric, a normal person's uric acid, as I understand it, is between 7.1 and 7.4. And if you get up to the 7.98 range, that's when they say that you have gout. And unmedicated my uric acid level was 14 and a half when I was diagnosed with gout. Um, I have since found out that what I was eating, well, what I was eating had everything to do with it, but it wasn't what they said it was. And I now also know that uric acid is the body's most powerful water-based antioxidant. So is high uric acid bad? I don't know. Does, is high uric, you know, what causes your uric acid to be high? I also don't know that. I know when I got my labs checked at the four month mark, besides all of my other markers, my uric acid was not what I would call normal range, but it was less than eight. I want to say it was 7.7 7 or 7.8. 7 I just don't remember off the top of my head because um, people ask about all the other labs. So I kind of had those memorized, but uh, the uric acid, I glanced at it and went, okay, that, that seems to be all right. And I was, you know, I've been eating nothing but red meat for four months when I, the last time I got that checked. So I, I wish I could answer your question about what actually causes gout. I do know from listening to other people now that it is an inflammatory effect. So whatever you were eating that was causing other inflammation in your body is probably leading to the gout as well. If I had to make a guess, I would have to say it's probably fructose because I know I always felt the worst, you know, when I'd get these wonderful, helpful advices from people and they'd say, oh, have you tried cherry juice? Uh, yeah, I tried cherry juice and it gave me some of the worst gout attacks I've ever had. So I suspect it's fructose, but I cannot say that for certain. Okay. So let's just go through, just to cap things up here, let's go through the list of benefits, okay, that you've seen. Obviously, you've lost a ton of weight. How much weight have you lost? A little over 150 pounds in a year. 150 pounds eating a fatty red meat diet. Do you add extra fat on top of that as well, like butter? You said you eat some cheese. Um, I used to have a lot of cheese. I haven't had any cheese recently, but yes, I do add, if I'm having just hamburger meat, 
because the, the cheap ground beef that I buy at Walmart, I don't have to do it quite so much here in Nebraska because 80-20 is less fat, less fatty than the 73-27. But because the 73-27 cooks down so much, I will generally, when it's about half cooked, I'll dump the grease off the pan. And then the rest of it that gets made while you're making your ground beef if you let it sit in the skillet for five minutes after you shut the heat off, it will reabsorb a lot of that grease. But because ground beef, it just, a lot of the fat renders out of ground beef. I do add chunks of butter on top of that. Um, Interesting. So you let, the, you let it cool in the grease to reabsorb some of that grease, and then you put some butter on top as well. Yes, yes. I put some butter on top as well. Um, the stew meat, I will occasionally have, when I look at it, if it looks like it's got plenty of fat in it, I won't add butter. But most of the time, the stew meat doesn't have a huge amount of fat hanging on it. So I will um, have chunks of butter on the side with my stew meat. And then when I occasionally have a roast, roasts always have big wide hunks of fat running down the middle of them. So I don't usually add butter to the roast unless it comes out extremely tough, which happens occasionally because I'm not the world's greatest cook. Um, if it comes out especially tough, I will then take hunks of butter, set it on top of the roast on my plate, and then throw that in the microwave for 15, 20 seconds to let the butter melt down and soak into the roast. Um, but purely as a softening agent, not necessarily to add more fat to the roast because roasts are pretty fatty. Right. Um, so yes, I lost 150 pounds eating a lot of fat. A lot of fat and, and more red meat than people have probably eaten in an entire lifetime. Do you eat like three meals a day or how many meals a day are you eating? I eat one, one meal a day. I started off at three meals a day. Cause that's, I, I think that's best for most people because I was hungry. You know, that's what I was used to, but very quickly, I started skipping breakfast because I just wasn't hungry in the morning. And then I found Dr. Jason Fung and a few others, and they were talking about this intermittent fasting thing. And I tried to cut my eating window down to, to six hours. So I was doing what they call an 18-6 and discovered that I just didn't get hungry in six hours. So, And then I thought, well, one meal a day seems to be a thing. Let me see how I do on that. And that was my ticket. I started eating one meal a day. And for those of you that are, you know, wondering, well, this is just another calorie restriction thing. You're, if you're only eating once a day, you're not eating nearly as much food as most people would be eating, which is why you've lost 150 pounds in a year. Let me set that record straight. My one meal a day averages about two and a half pounds of meat, whether it be two and a half pounds of ground beef or two and a half pounds of roast or two and a half pounds of stew meat. In fact, the day after my birthday, because I made myself a special sausage and shrimp meal for my birthday last week, and it wasn't nearly as much as I was used to eating. So I was really hungry the day after, and I had a really big roast. It was just under three pounds. It was like 2.86 pounds of roast in my freezer. I got that out and cooked it up, and I ate it all. It was almost three full pounds of, of a beef chuck roast that I ate the day after my birthday. And I've been eating between two, two and a half pounds, sometimes as close to three pounds of meat a day for the entire year. So wow. And that's all in one thing. So you have stomach of steel. I do. I do. Well, <laughs> you know, I was an over the road truck driver for 25 plus years eating at truck stops. will give you a, either it will either kill you or give you a cast iron stomach. <laughs> and we haven't had any heart attacks. You're a per person with, you know, a uh, pretty bad history of, of cardiac issues. No health, no heart problems to speak of, only eating red meat pretty much for an entire year. Yeah, none whatsoever. You know, I was, uh, when you have um, heart surgery, because my triple bypass, I had two arteries that were 100% blocked. 
and one artery that was 98% blocked. So I was 2% of a blocked artery away from just falling over dead. The doctor, my cardiologist is still amazed that I managed to walk into his office with zero symptoms other than getting a little out of breath um, easier than I thought I should. And uh, even after the triple bypass surgery, there's, a, there's this thing they test called an ejection fraction. And as I understand it, 50 is actually the best number you can have. And I was always in the, even after my surgery, I was in the, the high 30s, low 40s. It was good, but it was not great. Um, I just had a cardiology appointment about two weeks ago, and my ejection fraction was 49. So it was just a little bit off of perfect, but much better than it was even right after my triple bypass surgery. So no, I've had no problems. Um, <clears throat> my doctor, I'm not sure why, maybe because I've never asked him. I know they, he does a CAC, coronary artery and calcium, every time you walk into his office. He has a he has that equipment right there in his office. He does it every time you visit. He's never mentioned what my CAC score was, so I can't tell you, but he was extremely pleased with everything he saw when I was there and that last time. And over the winter, his blood thinner was the only drug that I was still taking because I had seen him just before I left in the fall and he and asked him about it. And he's like, well, you're doing pretty good. Let's go ahead and keep taking it over the winter and we'll take and we'll take a look at it when you get back in the spring and see what happens. Um, and he did take me off of my blood thinner just a couple of weeks ago. So now I'm on zero medications. Okay, so. You go to your cardiologist, you go to your, your, your regular family doctor. Do, do you tell them what you're eating? Do you tell them the, the diet that you're on? Um, my cardiologist, yes, because he is not keto himself, but he knows, <clears throat> he knows about the ketogenic diet and he is not against it. <clears throat> he's not actually a fan of it, but he's not against it. He understands it and realizes that many of his patients are getting very good results with it. Um, I have not actually said the word carnivore or meat only to him. I just say, I'm doing a modified version of the keto diet. And he seems okay with that. Um, my family doctor, I actually have an appointment with a new guy next week because I fired my old one just before I went south for the winter because while I was at that time only down about 80 pounds or so um my fatty liver disease was gone my chronic kidney disease was gone my arthritis was 95 percent better my spinal stenosis was 95 percent better I was standing I was walking walking about a mile to a mile and a half a day at that point, um, <clears throat> everything was better. But because I wasn't completely metabolically healed yet at that time, my, uh, um, what am I trying to, oh, my, my LDL cholesterol, it's not, LDL is not cholesterol, as we all know from watching Professor K. LDL is the transporter. It's the low density lipoprotein, but because my LDL number was still up, he's like, well, you should probably start taking your statin again. And I'm like, man, that's just ignorant. All, all of these improvements I've made and all you want to talk about is a statin. Why don't you go ahead and collect my records and have them prepared? I'll be, I'll be sending for them when I find a new doctor. Because you and I, we're, we're just going to have to be done now. Okay. Yeah, it's so frustrating. Okay, so lost weight, 150 pounds. Your heart health is better than it's, than it's been in forever. No gout attacks. 
whatsoever since changing over to carnivore. Anything else? Yeah, well, you know, my spinal stenosis that made it so I couldn't stand up for two to two and a half minutes. Um, I'm now walking. Uh, the last time I tried a big hike, I did 15 miles on trail with a 20 pound backpack on my back. Um, and that was in the woods on an actual trail, not just walking around the block like I do a lot of times. Um, so that's all better. My fatty liver has gone. My chronic kidney disease is gone. My liver and kidney markers are better than they've been in decades. Um, as I said earlier, I was taking 13 pills in the morning and nine at night plus pain pills. I now take zero meds. And I should clarify for your audience, at the time, I was on three blood pressure medicines. And my blood pressure was still running between 144 and 148 over 90 to 94-ish. So it was still considered quite high. What is it on, now? On three blood pressure medicines. When I checked it this morning, it was 112 over 68. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, and I noticed my blood pressure runs. went way down on carnivore as well. Yeah, I mean, that's that's about what it runs. Anywhere from 112 to 116 and between 68 and 70. It doesn't vary a whole lot. That's that's where my my blood pressure is every morning. Hmm. Um, and you, you salt your food? Oh, yeah. I, I was actually thinking about this because I just got... Um, a new thing of salt in the, in my Amazon order. I, uh, I use Redmond's real salt and it comes in a, in a 16 ounce bag. And I got thinking about it. I had never, I, I just got this new one in and it's the kosher, which is the slightly bigger grind rather than the fine stuff that I can put through my salt shaker. Um, because for some reason, the, the fine, was a lot more expensive. It has since come back down, but they, they, the supply must have been short when I ordered this last bag. Um, so I've got a different size salt than I normally have, but that was in one year, I am now on my sixth one pound bag of salt. Okay, crazy. So Bob, just to wrap things up, is there any, do you have any sort of parting words for somebody with gout who's watching this and, and, you know, and, and these other conditions that you're talking about and they're just on the fence, you know, they're scared to try it. You know, what, what do you have to say to those people? What have you got to lose? If you have gout, just, just try it. Your doctors are wrong. I'm right. Just do it. And the problem that we're fighting against with gout is that if you go to Dr. Google right now and type in gout diet, you will get the exact same result for the first page and a half to two pages of the handout that I was given in 1983. That has not changed. Doctors are still saying the same stupid stuff that is the same bad advice that I've gotten, had gotten for 40 years. What have you got to lose at this point? It's obvious that what they're doing is not working because you're still taking all of the gout drugs, whether it be allopurinol or one of the actual uric acid blockers, which doesn't seem like a good idea to me because it is in the body's natural antioxidant. So artificially lowering your uric acid level seems like a bad idea just like artificially lowering your ldl seems like a really bad idea now that i know more about what cholesterol does in the body um <clears throat> if but if you're on the fence about this whether you have gout or arthritis or fatty liver disease or chronic kidney disease or any other autoimmune or inflammatory process in your body that's giving you trouble. At this point, depending on how long you've been sick, what do you really have to lose? Give it a try. Just give it 90 days. You can do anything for 90 days. I could probably even stand on my head for 90 days now if I had to. Um, 
just give it a try. It's not going to hurt you. And as I like to say on my channel, I like to give Coach Bronson credit for it, but I because I think he's the one I first heard it from. But I say this all the time on my channel. Nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. And you won't know what healthy feels like till you give this a try for 90 days. And then you're going to go, wow, I can't believe. I knew I hurt in this joint. I knew I was having trouble walking. I knew, you know, whatever it is that you're having trouble with, you know about that, but you won't realize how good the rest of your body can feel until you just give it a try. There is no reason not to try this. Um, could it kill you? <clears throat> now that I know the full truth, no, it's probably not going to kill you. In fact, I will say with 99% certainty that you will see some sort of improvement. Will you lose as much weight as I did? Probably not. Will you have the miraculous turnaround that I had? Probably not, but maybe you will. Why not give it a try for 90 days and see what happens to you? Exactly. So be like Bob. There's no harm trying it out if you're suffering why the hell would you continue listening to your doctor, right? You were on tons of medications. Obviously, the pharmaceutical industry has no vested interest in curing you of this disease, right? And, and getting you off of these medications. Hence why maybe they keep perpetuating the same crappy diet to everyone just to keep you sick. But Bob, wise words from a wise man. I'm so glad that you're feeling better. I love your channel. Where can we find you? Where can we follow you? Um, I am semi-retired Bob. I'm that's the name of my YouTube channel. I have a Facebook group that is also called Semi-Retired Bob. Those are the two main things that I do on social media. Perfect. I'll link those down below in the description. Thanks so much for coming on today, Bob. I uh, wish you all the best in your continued progress on the carnivore diet. Well, thanks for having me, Scott. It's been a lot of fun being here. We'll have to do this again sometime. Absolutely. We'd love to. Thanks, Bob.